Well, welcome back to video six of eight. Didn't think you could make it, did you? Well, we're getting closer to the end now. What we're going to do during this particular video is um, look at issues associated with restructuring from the structural frame. So that's kind of the intent. And uh, we're going to do it uh, using Mitzberg's kind of organizational structure uh, where we've got techno workers and top administrators, the strategic apex and uh, the support staff and uh, the uh, operating core. And in this particular case, when you start looking at that structure, there are really kind of two things that go on. One, you have certain companies that just uh, fall into this idea that there is some universal best system and they can bring that best system from their previous company uh, to the new one as they become the CEO or uh, uh, chief operating officer. And that doesn't really work well. Uh, each company is different. And as we talked about in one of the earlier videos, there are a number of factors that influence the uh, corporate culture. And that corporate culture then influences what's the right organizational structure to support that. So when you start looking at restructuring, <clears throat> one of the kind of fallacies or, or issues is going to be this you know, one size fits all. Uh, the second, and, and tried to illustrate it in the uh, little graph there, is the, the organization is under constant tension. Um, and this is especially so when you've got a divisional organization or it's more, the structure is more uh, uh, diffuse. The, the techno workers are all trying to standardize everything and, and then uh, the analysts measure it. The top administrators want to centralize. The uh, middle managers want autonomy to do their job. They're being pulled from the top and the bottom. Support staff want greater collaboration between all the units would make their lives a lot easier. And then the operating uh, of course says, I don't need any of these other guys. I'm the one doing all the work. We want control of our own destiny. So you're always going to have tension uh, between an organization and it, it, it really is throughout the entire organization because you have competing needs. Um, in this slide, what I try to get into a little bit and what the book covers is why do you restructure? And over on the left, I, I uh, list out kind of the four dominant mechanisms uh, of restructuring, why restructuring occurs so if the environment shifts, if you have a huge change in technology like the invention of railroads, uh, if the organization starts to grow and has outgrown it, it, its previous uh, mechanisms for vertical and lateral uh, communications, uh, you, it, it, it's time to restructure. And then finally, leadership. If you bring in a new CEO, new COO, uh, sometimes they will try to import the uh, structure that they had previously because they're comfortable with it. Um, the book goes into detail three kind of uh, uh, troubled uh, configurations, uh, the uh, impulsive uh, firm, and, and the book talks a bit about this being those uh, startup companies that, that really just uh, can't grow, uh, can't move forward, uh, it can't do you know the next step. Uh, they were great out of the gates, they were great initially, but it, they, they, they struggle to make the transition uh, to a more mature uh, form or, or company. Uh, the, the second is this kind of stagnant uh, bureaucracy. Everyone wants to do it the old way. Everyone's very comfortable doing it uh, the old way. And this goes on until a disaster occurs and, and a restructure uh, becomes one of the possible solutions. And then finally, if you've got uh, an organization that's fairly uh, decentralized, you have a headless giant. And, and again, you'll have a crisis occur uh, where restructuring will become one of those options uh, for consideration to try to address uh, the issues. All right, one more slide in this short video. We're going to uh, look at uh, successful uh, structural change. And the uh, idea here, or, or the four ideas here, are that you've got to be careful just as you're building software, just as you're doing any project, you know, the design and analysis and requirements gathering up. Uh, front pay huge dividends when you go to do implementation and maintenance of some system. And that's especially uh, true as it applies to uh, structural change. Uh, the, the second is that uh, new structures have to align with the challenges of the circumstances of the time. And the three most important words there are 
of the time. It's going to change. You don't want to thrash, but you do want to make sure that you're aligned with what the real challenges are and what the real uh, circumstances are. The third is kind of a corollary to that. You're addressing changes in technology, environment, and goals of the organization. Uh, you want to make sure that that new structure addresses those issues. If not, again, you're, you're, you're going to have uh, one of the dilemmas occur in terms of um, uh, the challenges between uh, the different forms of uh, uh, vertical and uh, lateral coordination, and it's going to cause problems. And then finally, no big bang. Although uh, there are a fair number of restructures that are big bang, um, what research has uh, shown that the successful structural changes is incremental changes, retain what worked, change what's not working, and do it with a degree of agility so that you can uh, address the issue, align with technology, environment, and goals, uh, make sure that you're relevant, you've carefully structured it, implement it, and away you go. And at least from my perspective, I've seen, I'm seeing within organizations, uh, in, in, instead of this restructuring uh, occurring you know, once every 10 years, once every five years, it's actually occurring more frequently, but it's in much smaller steps. Uh, and it's making sure that they're, they're keeping the structure aligned with the challenges that the company is facing. All right, well, look at that. You've survived video six of eight looking at the structural frame. And what we're going to do in the uh, next lesson is move in to start looking at task and structure in small groups and the performance of small groups and where that takes us. All right, see you in the next video.